Like so many things, it's easy to compartmentalize cooking styles and get caught up in stereotypes. In actual fact, chefs and cooks around the world are linked by their shared love of the culinary arts and they draw inspiration from so many different sources. A case in point is Kirti Kamal, who's an exponent of the French style while being inspired by her Indian roots. Karishma met up with Kirti and got busy in the kitchen. Even an unseasonal Durban shower couldn't keep Karishma away from Kirti's boutique bakery, where she specializes in the art of French pastry and cake making. There are a few things more tempting than a buttery, delicate pastry. But finding or making a pastry worthy of the phrase pièce de résistance is no easy task. Today I'm about to meet chef and patissière Kirti Kamal. She promises me a day of decadence and indulgence and I'm sure I'm going to feel like I'm right back on the streets of Perry. I see Kirti's already ready for us so I'm not going to keep her waiting. Kirsty, so Hi, lovely Kirishma. to meet you. Lovely to meet you as well. I'm so excited to get cooking. What's on the menu? To start off, we have our lamb roulade, which is our main dish. And it's lamb mince, and it's got lots of lovely spices in it, and it's got honey and walnuts, which is my Persian influence coming in. Let's turn up our heat a little bit more. If you can put in a tablespoon of oil for me, that would be great. And can we get in a tablespoon of garlic? If you could put in about three tablespoons of our finely chopped onion. Great, so we're just gonna saute this on a low heat. We prefer it to be translucent and still sweet. Kirsty, how did you go from studying anthropology and art to opening up Boutique Wilmondry? While I was actually doing my Bachelor of Arts degree, I entered the Sunday Times Young Chef of the Year competition in 2008. And that was a real eye-opener for me in terms of the actual hospitality industry. Even though I didn't win, it was just a fantastic experience and it spurred me forward to actually enroll in chef school and then take my career forward in the hospitality industry as a professional chef. Okay, so what's next? So let's add in our spices. If we can do a tablespoon of cumin, two teaspoons of the red masala, two teaspoons of our chili powder, two teaspoons of the coriander powder. So we've added in cumin and now we're adding in coriander powder. How long would we let this or the spices fry off for? Just a few minutes until it's nice and brown and you get a lot of fragrance coming through, which is when you know it's ready. Okay, so our next step, we're gonna add in a kilo of lamb mince that we've got here. Then we're gonna add in these lovely fragrant spices, a teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt and let's add in some honey. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes, also a Persian influence with the sweet and the savory and the spicy. Next, let's put in some thyme. I'm just gonna pop that in. And some walnuts, which we can add in. And you'll just pop in a little bit. I'm gonna keep some for the garnish as well. Chopped coriander, and I'll grab the mint. Must be one of my favorite smells in the whole world. You know, growing up, I would even put it in my pasta and my friends at school would laugh at me, but I, I loved the flavor. Me too, <laughs> and it just reminds you of home. Exactly, just pop in two nice handfuls and that's perfect. So now we're gonna mix this nicely through. So we need to get it all really integrated yes. together. Yes. So is this done? Yes, I'm now gonna show you how to roll it on a board and you can just use a normal chopping board. I'm gonna use a nice big piece of foil. And all we do is drizzle on a little bit of oil. And this just prevents the lamb from sticking to the foil. And it also keeps the outside nice and moist. Now we're gonna add our mince on. And you just need to spread it out into a nice large rectangle. So we're just gonna roll this nicely. Now you're gonna need to start off making the first roll quite tight and then you just lightly push it over. So you're rolling and pushing. Be careful not to get your foil stuck in because then you'd have foil rolled in and when you slice it, then you'd have foil in the center. And bring it over. The lamb goes into the oven for about 45 to 50 minutes at 175 on a fan oven. 
Kirti, this is the first of our side dishes. Tell me what goes into it. It's a lovely fragrant coconut rice and it's got fresh coconut in it instead of desiccated. So to start off, we're gonna temper our spices to add into the rice. So if you can add in for me about three tablespoons of olive oil. Next, we're gonna add in our whole spices and we're gonna start with some jeera and you can just add in about a teaspoon. The same with the mustard. And you can just pop in also two star anise. So let's add in some garlic. Just about half a tablespoon, not too much because you don't want it to be too strong. We're just gonna stir this a bit. Let's add in our red onion. Kirti, I can't help but notice that there's some beautiful pictures up on the wall. One of the things that I felt was so important is my heritage and my family. So I took the idea of decor and family and heritage and I decided what a great way to make the place look beautiful, put up all family photos. Our onions are done and we're gonna add in our cooked rice. Perfect. And then you're also just gonna drop in quite a few pieces of butter. And then you just let all of that melt yes, together. Yes, we're just gonna let the butter melt through. So if you can grab the coriander, we can pop that in. Just two handfuls and some chopped parsley, just about one handful. I find that coriander adds a sort of lemony flavor and the parsley, that's more of my uh, European influence in my dishes. We're gonna add fresh grated coconut, about a three quarter of it in, and just keep a little bit for the top. We're just gonna stir this through so it warms up. How's our rice looking? We're gonna add it into our platter, and we're gonna top it with some fresh herbs and more fresh coconut. We're just gonna finish up with some edible marigolds. They have actual therapeutic properties, so it's actually good to eat. Okay, should we clear up and move on to our next side? Yeah, sure. Okay. Time for dessert, my favorite part. For this recipe, it's a fig preserve and almond tart. And for the base, I'm using phyllo pastry because I find that it's a lot lighter than sweet short crust pastry. And for the filling, I've got 125 grams of butter. If you can pop that in, Karishma. And I'm gonna grab the caster sugar, the same amount. So we're gonna start beating that. We're gonna add in some vanilla, just a little bit. And then we're gonna add in our two eggs, just one at a time, so it makes it easy to actually beat through. We're gonna add in our almonds and our flour, which is actually gonna just bring the whole filling together. That's actually perfect. So we can set that aside and we can move on to our actual filo pastry, pop the filling in afterwards. So if you can take out five sheets of phyllo for me and leave it on the board. Phyllo is such a forgiving pastry to work with. And even if it tears a little bit, you can always patch it up. So we're just gonna brush each sheet lightly with some melted butter. We're just gonna pop that over. So you're almost sticking them together. Yes, exactly. And you're creating layers and the butter in between lifts the pastry and makes it nice and delicate and light. We're gonna do one last brush on the top. And then I've got a loose bottom tartan. So we just lift it up and pop this in. And we're just gonna fold the pastry in the middle because this makes it nice and stable so that when you bake it with your filling, it's nice and firm and it, the pastry is holding the filling. Just roll up the edges. So we're gonna pop in our almond filling you can just spread that out for me with okay. the spatula. And we're just gonna add our preserved figs. Yum. And these are actually fresh figs that I've preserved myself. Is that it? Yep, this is it. So how long does this go into the oven for? We're gonna leave it in the oven at 175 for about 30 minutes. So we've kept the starter for last because of the prawns and it's really quick and easy to prepare. So exactly. show me how it's done. Can we get some of the olive oil in here, about half? And if you could put a tablespoon of garlic for me, that would be great. Now, this looks so interesting. What is this, Kirti? This is actually orzo. It's a pasta rice, which is usually made from durum wheat semolina. So we can add in our orzo. 
fry this off a little bit. And I've got a mixture of some fish stock and vegetable stock to keep those seafood flavors going through. And we're gonna cook it down and we're just gonna add in more at a later stage. So now we let this cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna pop in our saffron and then some cream. Nice generous pinch. Okay, that's perfect. Two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And then we're just gonna finish off with some fresh basil and some parsley. That's perfect. And we'll just leave a few leaves for the top as well. Now we're just gonna finish off our prawns to add on top. So if we can just add in a little bit of oil, some chili flakes, a little bit of garlic, and we're gonna pop our prawns in. Perfect, thank you. So let's season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. How long will these take to cook? Just a few minutes. You don't want to have tough, rubbery prawns. So we're just gonna pop the prawns in the middle. Finish it off with some fresh basil and some more parsley. Is that it, all done? Yep, it's all done, let's enjoy. Take it to the table. Sure. The aromas were as appetizing as the presentation. Wow, you can really taste the basil and the pasty coming through with the saffron. It's so delicious. It's got a little bit of a kick, which I love. It does from the chili. Now this, I simply cannot wait for.